Hi, I'm Alex and this is Pucks and Paperbacks. Today I am wrapping up the year with the end of the year bookish survey. This was created by Jamie over at Perpetual Page Turner and her blog post will be linked down below that has all of the questions if you want to fill them out for yourself and if you do let me know in the comments some of your answers. For a recap of my reading year in 2022 I thought this was the perfect way to share with you some of the books that I liked and some of that I didn't and just answer some superlatives. So I'm gonna get right into the video. If you enjoy this feel free to give it a thumbs up. It really helps on my channel when you do so and if you're new here and you want to hear more of my thoughts on queer and trans books feel free to hit subscribe. Let's get into the video. Hey everyone, just before this video starts, I want to mention I am in full support of the HarperCollins Union and there are some HarperCollins titles in this video. There are links down below to how you can help and support the union at this time. They have been striking for 40 days to receive a fair wage and HarperCollins has not come to the bargaining table. So to show support, they have asked reviewers and content creators to not review the titles and so I just wanted to let you know that before I start this video. Please support the union. The links are always down below. So I will not be reviewing any HarperCollins titles besides the end of the year content until they receive a fair wage. So if you want to help, the link is always down below. And here's the video. First, starting with my 2020 reading stats, I read 90 books this year. I didn't have a goal. My goal for the year was to have no goal and I wanted to have a better relationship with reading. Over the last couple of years, I realized that my relationship with reading was becoming unhealthy and in the middle of books, I was thinking about what I was going to rate them rather than what's going to happen next. And so to help me have a better relationship with reading, I decided to stop using star ratings and this has helped me so much. I don't think about what I am going to rate the book and it just feels so much better. I feel like I am better at just communicating what I thought about the book rather than if it's a four or a three or something like that. It just didn't work for me and I'm really glad that I figured that out. However, I am still trying to fix this because as I am a content creator and I talk about books on the internet, I do realize that if I'm making it a reading vlog or I'm going to be talking about this book in some way, I am thinking about that as I read and I don't want to do that. So I think maybe just putting some notes down while I read might help, but I just want to have a better relationship with reading. So that is another goal for this year. However, I'm not really setting any goals, but we'll get to that later. Number of rereads was zero. I don't tend to reread books a lot unless there's going to be a series. I started rereading Beartown but I never finished so that is on the agenda for this year. Genre you read the most? I have two different answers for this. So according to my reading tracker from Book Riot, this says that I read romance as one of my biggest genres which makes a lot of sense because I was in my romance era and I'm going to continue. I am really glad about this because I found some romance that I really enjoy and authors that I like and this is just a genre I never thought I would read but here we are. 31% of books I read were romance, 14% were fantasy which I don't really know how that happened. I don't read fantasy but I think these were some of the graphic novels I read. 16.7% were memoirs slash bio. I did read a few memoirs this year and 11.9% was mystery slash crime. Contemporary is not listed on my Book Riot tracker or just didn't convert over to the graphs so I had to do it manually but 39 books I read this year were contemporary. So I am still in my contemporary game. It's one of my favorite genres. So if you like contemporary as well, feel free to hit subscribe because I talk about it a lot. Now starting with some of the questions and superlatives for best in books. The first question is, what is your best book of the year? With no surprise, it is Icebreaker by A.L. Grazia Day. I have shouted this book since I read it in January, since it came out in January. This is an Achillean romance following two hockey players who both want to be the first round pick in the draft. It is one of the best rivals to lovers I've ever read and I am obsessed with it. It's a book that I would reread. I haven't gotten a chance to but I would definitely reread it when I get the chance because it is awesome and I love it so much. Next, a book that you were excited for and thought you were going to love more but didn't. For me, this was 16 Souls by Rosie Talbot. I read this in my queer horror vlog and I 
just thought it was okay. I liked some of it, but it was just too slow for me. And that is something that I deal with when I'm reading mystery thrillers. It was just too slow for me. There were some plot holes that I was confused about. I wasn't connected to the characters because the beginning of the book is a little rushed. And I felt like I didn't have time to actually meet the characters that we are trying to find. And so I was really pulled out of the story. I just wanted the story to tell me why I should care. And I just didn't, which was a shame, but I did like some parts of it. So do go and watch that vlog if you want to hear my full thoughts. Most surprising book you read this year. This was Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I read this for my video where I read like Jess from Gilmore Girls and I loved this so much and I didn't think I was going to like any of the books I read, but this was a winner. I loved it so much. It was so fun and it was thought-provoking and it just was a really fun read book you pushed the most people to read and they did. If you saw any of my book rec videos in 2022, I recommended Icebreaker in like every single one, but a book that people did read because of me was Beetle and the Hollow Bones. And I am so glad they did because I really enjoyed it and I got it recommended to me and then I was able to recommend it to others and I loved everybody telling me that they read it. Honestly, that is the best thing that you can do for me is if you enjoyed a book that I recommended, please tell me because it will make my day and make all of this worth it for me. <laughs> Next question is all about series and honestly I don't really read series. I said that I started the Beartown series again because the series ender did come out but I haven't read it yet. No spoilers please but I need to find some time this year to finally get around to that. I need to like book a month where I just read Beartown. Favorite new author you discovered in 2022 has to go to Kyle Lukoff. I read a bunch of his books this year. Some children, some middle grade and he was one of my top authors. If you follow me on Instagram Instagram, I did a Spotify wrapped inspired post that was entirely bookish and had some stats. I also have to mention Corey McCarthy and A.R. Capetta. I love their writing so much and I can't wait to read more of their books. As well as Courtney Gold, she is now one of my favorite queer mystery thriller authors. Her book was fantastic. Best book from a genre you don't typically pick up or was out of your comfort zone. A Lots Away by Darcy Little Badger. I love this book so much. I would never read a book about supernatural characters. I don't care about vampires and things like this, but this book made me care. This is a ghost story. It is a murder mystery story following a leaping Apache girl named Ellie, who is also asexual, and her cousin is murdered, and she's trying to get to the bottom of it, and she has a ghost dog. I cannot wait to reread this book because it was fantastic. Oh my god. This is one book that I'm so pissed that I took so long to read, but I'm really glad that I ended up reading it because it is now one of my favorites. Most action-packed, thrilling, or unputdownable book that you read this year was Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran. I read this in December and I have never read something quicker. I could also use Icebreaker for this, but I don't want to use it for like every single question, but Icebreaker could apply to like most of these questions. <laughs> I also want to mention a book that I read in one day. And now if you know me, I don't do that. But one day after work, I just sat down and I read When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. I cried and it was a fantastic book. This is so awesome. It does have some magical realism, fantastical elements, and it is so beautiful. It deserves everything and I loved it so, so much. I'm so glad I picked this up. Books that you read in 2022 that you would reread, like I said, Icebreaker and Alatsue apply to that. I don't reread books very often, but if I were to reread some, it would be those. Favorite cover of a book you read in 2022 has to go to Ivalice Explains It All by Andrea Beatrice Arango. This beautiful cover and the whole jacket was designed by Katrina Dam Kohler. I mentioned this book in my recent reads video if you want to hear more about it. I loved it so much, but I want you to hear more about it. So go over to that video after this one. Most memorable character has to go to Neil from The Feeling of Falling in Love. I love this so much. I love an angsty, angry trans boy. So Neil is definitely one of my favorite characters. I just loved him so much. I also have to mention Rosalind Palmer Takes the Cake by Alexis Hall. Rosalind and the whole cast of characters as well as her kid were so funny. This is one of the funniest books I read this year. It was hilarious. I also did a reading vlog for this, so that'll also be linked down below. <laughs> 
The most beautifully written book I read this year was The 30 Names of Night by Zane Jukata. I loved this so much. It was so beautifully written. That is the only word I can use to describe this. This is a historical fiction following a Syrian American trans man in search for his name. It is so beautifully written. I loved how this book talks about transness, but it also talks about grief, gentrification, and immigration. And oh my god, it was awesome. I loved it so much. Future me here because I forgot a prompt, which is the most thought-provoking or life-changing book you read this year. This has to go to all of the memoirs I read this year, including Almost American Girl by Robin Ha. I also read Know My Name by Chanel Miller, and this was beautifully written. I listened to it on audiobook, and it was heart-wrenching. This is the story of Chanel Miller, who is the victim of Brock Turner. I just never know how to talk about these books because this is a a horrific situation. She was essayed at a party. This became a big news story and this is Chanel finally revealing herself and telling her side of the story and just everything she went through. And what I loved is that it is really just beautifully written in the sense that you feel like you're with Chanel along the way you're just seeing the patterns that she had with her family and how she just was really reserved. And you really just get to see her whole life and the bigger picture. And I just thought this was awesome. I'm so glad I finally got around to it. I always have such a weird feeling about talking about loving a really dark story. This along with I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy are two really heavy reads, but they're really well written. You can tell that these women put their heart and soul into this book and I liked them. They were good and that's why they're in this video. I just feel so weird talking about books that have heavy topics and saying that I enjoyed them because I didn't enjoy the content but I liked the way it was written and I just liked and appreciated that I was able to read about their stories. And the last memoir is House Fires by Connor Franta. I read this in January and I loved it so much. I always say that it feels like Connor writes a book when I need it the most and this one did not disappoint. This quote is what made me fall in love with this book and this is only on page eight. And because I fall into most of the unparalleled categories of pure fortune, I now know why it's nearly impossible for me to picture my future. It's almost never been done before. Or at the very least, it's incredibly scarce and that uniqueness must be acknowledged. I do know that older queer people obviously exist in today's timeline. I've met them in all their beautiful shapes and sizes, but there aren't as many of them as there could be. They don't exist in the quantity that should have been. Millions of potential futures were lost during a gruesome and downright shameful period in global history. And that is what made me fall in love with this book. I was so glad that he wrote about being a queer adult and feeling like there's no future for yourself because that is something that I also relate to and I just enjoyed everything else that Connor talked about in this. He's been one of my favorite YouTubers for a while now but he's so much more than that. He is such a great creative and writer and I love everything he puts out. Apologies because the angles in this video are going to end up switching because my camera batteries just keep dying. <laughs> but the next question is, book that you can't believe you waited until 2022 to read has to go to Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. Everybody was shouting about this book and I am really glad that I finally got around to it because it was such a hit. I read this along with my patrons and my Patreon book club that I host. It's bi-monthly. We read queer books. The link is always down below. And this is about Darcy Phillips who is anonymous at her school as the person who gives love advice and she's making money off this. And when this guy that she doesn't really like asks her, and says he's gonna pay her a bunch of money. She says yes, and I just really love the commentary on Bi Erasure. She has a sister who is trans, and I really enjoyed that the rep was so subtle. It's just her existing, and that is all I could ask for when I have a trans character in a book. I loved this so much and so did my patrons, so it was definitely a hit. I also want to shout out Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. I am so happy I finally read this because it was fucking great. This was phenomenal. It was everything. It has hockey. It has historical elements. We're set in 2004 and I thought it was 
freaking great. It was awesome. You'll hear more of my thoughts in a video in February, so I'm not going to talk about it too much here or this month, but just letting you know I loved it so much. Next is to share your shortest and longest book you read. According to the story graph, the longest book I read was Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully, and I did listen to the audiobook, which was 14 hours and 13 minutes, and the shortest book I read was 15 pages. This is a webcomic called Arrow Acing It. Well, I don't know if it's a webcomic, but I read it on the author's website, and I really enjoyed it. Book that shocked you the most was The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold, which was another Patreon pick. I loved this so much. I had been waiting for a book that would give me the action I needed in a thriller, and this definitely did. This is following a girl whose fathers are gay, and they are on this ghost hunting show, but it is so much more than that. They are into the small town that one of her fathers grew up in and kids are missing and dying and they're trying to find out why and the why shocked me. I loved it so much and I had read so many mystery thriller that were just disappointing and they were too slow for me but this one was awesome and I also listened to the audiobook. OTP of the year goes to Neil and Wyatt. This was such a good enemies to lovers and I just love a T for T romance. I also really enjoyed Jack and Ellie from Kiss Her Once For Me, which was a second chance romance. And one of my favorite rivals to lovers couples that was an icebreaker is Theo and Gabby from Cafe Caliche by Emery Lee. The next question is favorite non-romantic relationship. And for me, I realized that I read a lot of books that don't have good friendships, but one book I read, which is a middle grade that I thought had a really good friendship was Swim Team by Johnny Christmas. Best 2022 debut you read goes to Eva Lee's Explains It All. This was so good. It's also written in verse and it was awesome. It's a middle grade about a girl with PTSD, anxiety, and experiences panic attacks. And I just thought the mental health rep was awesome. And I just loved this so much because it's following a girl who is one of like the bad kids at school. A lot of the teachers think that she's the problem and I love this book because it shows that she's not the adults are the problem and it was so good. I loved it. I can't wait to read more. I love Andrea. She's awesome and this was awesome. Book that made you cry? I cried over a lot of middle grade this year. Ava Lee's made me cry. Too Bright to See by Kyle Lukoff made me cry so much that I turned it into a TikTok and I also posted it here on YouTube as a short. And I also ugly cried over When You Trap a Tiger. That book emotionally drained me. It wrecked me, but it was beautiful. It was so good and I'm so glad I read it. Oh my God, it was so good. A book that put a smile on my face and was the most fun to read was The Heartbreak Bakery by A.R. Capetta. I loved this. It is about Sid who is an agender magical baker and it's Sid just trying to rectify what Sid did. Uh, Sid makes these breakup brownies and people in Sid's life start breaking up and Sid tries to get to the bottom of it. And I just thought this was such a fun story. It was awesome and I would definitely reread it. It was so fun and it also has recipes included and I did make Sid's breakup brownies in a video. Hidden Gem of the Year goes to Stone Fruit by Lee Lay. I read this for my graphic novel vlog where I read some queer graphic novels and this was awesome. It is so underrated. I'm so happy that someone recommended it to me because it was such a good story. It's a slice of life about two queer adults who are helping the one character's sister and babysitting her kid and it is just so good. It's about some found family. We have some trans rep and it was just so, so great. Book that crushed your soul. I already talked about the books that made me cry. So those definitely crushed my soul. Most unique book you read? I have to give it to How to Be Remy Cameron by Julian Winters. This talks all about labels. We have a geeky main character Big trigger warning for HP references. There's a shit ton, but I thought this was still such a great book. I really love how it talks about feeling confined to a label. This was such a great YA coming of age about finding your identity. Book that made you the most mad. What do you think it's gonna be? Because it's definitely beach read. <laughs> um, I think it's more that I'm just mad that people mismarketed it because 
It has a lot of graphic child abuse and I was not ready for that. I don't like that. I don't like that there were no signs. Nobody was preparing you for that when they're talking about this. The book is so mismarketed and this is not stopping me from reading Emily Hemnery, but I'm definitely going to be taking her books with a grain of salt and just trying to do more research before I actually read them because this is way too mismarketed. It looks like a really light and fluffy read, but it is so dark. And I love me a dark read, but I need to be prepared for that first. I also read The Wedding Date and I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed because I love Jasmine Guillory, but I just have had some romances that make me feel like, why are you together? <laughs> like, I'm so confused sometimes when I'm reading a romance and I'm just like, I don't see it. We're all adults here and I do get some adults can have these sort of conflicts, but the miscommunication tropes, I just hate so much. Those are all the book questions. So now we're gonna turn over to my creator life. Favorite video I made in 2022. I already mentioned a couple here. I did a vlog for Icebreaker that I enjoyed. I'm really glad that I was able to document my feelings on that book because it was so awesome. My queer baking vlog was great. I've been wanting to make that for a while now. And when I read like Jess Mariano, I was so glad I finally did that because I have been wanting to do it for a couple years now. And in May for my birthday, I read some childhood favorites, including a Lizzie McGuire book, an Arthur book, and Amber Brown is not a crayon. Best bookish event you participated in this year. I was a host for the Queer Romance Readathon created by Beautifully Bookish Bethany, and the live stream was so funny. I had the best time on that live stream. It was awesome, and I'm so glad I was able to take part. Most challenging thing about content creation this year, I actually didn't have too much. I mean, I made my whole boundaries video. That was one thing that was bothering me. And I'm really glad that it hasn't happened as much this year. But if you're new and you haven't watched that video, please go and do it. Uh, there are some people that still don't care for my boundaries. Uh, so I did make a fact on my website if you just want to know more. I can't be everybody's friend. I have select few friends and I want everyone just to know that there is a strict line between friend and creator and I would like to keep it that way. Obviously, if you want to meet more bookish people, I suggest that you become a patron. I have a lot of great people over there. We have a small little community over on Patreon where we do some watch parties and have a book club and talk about books. So if you wanna meet more bookish people, I highly recommend to sign up for my Patreon if you have the means. It's only a dollar a month and it helps support my content and you can meet more people, but there is is still that line between creator and friend. I am friends with certain people who are creators. If you're a booktuber and you want to get in touch with me, definitely do so. But if you are a viewer, I want to not have a friendship. Parasocial relationships do exist. And if you are feeling like that with me, I think you need to evaluate some things and realize that I am a creator first and I have select few friends and I can't be friends with everybody, but I do appreciate everybody that comments. Please leave a comment on my videos. That is the best way to engage with me. If there was a book that you read because of me, hit me up in my DMs and tell me. I can't be friends with everybody and I do have my boundaries. So if you have stuck to my boundaries, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Most popular video on my channel this year was my queer romance Rex. I feel like every Everybody's seeking out some queer romances. So if you haven't gone and watched it and you're looking for some wrecks, I'll have it linked down below. Video you wish got more love this year has to go to my trying bookish products video. I went on TikTok and I tried out and bought some products and services that were recommended to me that were bookish and I tried them out and I let you know what I thought of them. Uh, go and watch that video if you haven't. <laughs> I like those type of videos. I am doing another one. It's in the works, but it is like a long video. So I am like in the process of doing it. I just have to finish it up. It's hard on YouTube because I end up getting comments of people saying that they did enjoy the video and I really appreciate that. That is one way to engage with my videos and just tell me directly because for me, 
if it gets views and likes, that doesn't really give me the validation that people actually liked it. I would rather get a message of somebody saying they enjoyed this video or they're sharing it somewhere. I really appreciate when people tag me on Instagram. It's really fun and I just love that people love what I make. Did you complete any reading challenges or goals for the year? Like I said at the beginning of the video, I didn't set any number goals, but I did participate in the bingo board, hashtag read queer two, created by Obscure Pages, and I filled out the whole bingo board but one. I really wanted to black out the board, so that will be a challenge for this year. I also participated in the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, and my goal was to read 30 of the prompts, and I completed 31 books. I also participated in the Book Riot Read Harder Challenge, and I read 14 of the 24 prompts. I also had a goal of reading at least 20% of my own TBR, and I ended up reading 10%. I saw that I read way more from my library. I did accumulate some books this year, but overall, I just read way more from my library, but this is a goal that I just want to continue. So here's to 2023. I just want to keep reading more from my own TBR. And the last set of questions are looking ahead, talking about some of my anticipated releases and books that I want to read in 2023. First is one book you didn't get to in 2022, but will be reading this year is Ophelia after all. I'm so pissed that I never got around to this, but it'll happen. <laughs> Book you were most anticipating in 2023. I have a whole video where I share some of my most anticipated queer releases, including Friday I'm in Love by Cameron Garrett. I'm so excited. This is about a girl who throws herself a coming out party. It's gonna be great. A 2023 debut I'm anticipating is Always the Almost by Edward Underhill. This is his trans rom-com. One thing you hope to accomplish in your reading or booktube life. I would love to hit 3k. It's been a goal of mine for the last couple years. I am 180 subscribers away, so we'll see what happens. I really want to build more community on this channel and kind of steer away from the views. I know views still help with my channel. They would help with sponsorships and help publishers see me more, but Honestly, I think I just need to come to terms that this is just a thing I like to do. And that is really what I did in 2022. I just made shit that I liked and wanted to make and it was a fun time. So I'm going to continue that this year. And that has been it for the end of the year bookish survey. If you have any answers to these questions, let me know in the comments. I would love to know about your reading year and what you hope to accomplish this year. Thank you so much for watching and I will be back soon with my best books of the year. Bye.